Hello all, I welcome you all to the last video of this course 5.4 Google Data Studio and Data Visualization. In this video, we will learn the following Data Flow Pipeline Creation using Cloud Data Flow, Directing the Data Flow to the Bucket in Cloud Storage, Querying the Telemetry in BigQuery, Data Visualization in Google Data Studio. So, Finally, here we are waiting eagerly to visualize the data from the sensor and make some inferences out of it. For this purpose, we are using an awesome cloud service called Data Studio that comes integrated with the Google Cloud Platform. Now, our agenda is to create a table in BigQuery. Later, we utilize the cloud storage bucket we created in the previous video as a buffer for our data and finally we create a data flow pipeline from cloud pubsub topic to bigquery so like usual head over to your google cloud console and click on the bigquery from the navigation menu on the page before you click on create data set now give it a name in the data set id next Choose a data location of your choice. For the default table expiration, I prefer never. Similarly, for encryption, I am totally fine with Google's encryption. If you are going to store something private in this BigQuery table, I suggest you to use the customer managed key and use a key of your own. Finally, click on Create Dataset. Now, from the left side tab, select your created data set and click on create table. If you want to import your table from other sources like drive, cloud storage, etc. Select that in the create table from field. But I stick to the default empty table as the telemetry flows into my big query table. Give your table a name. Next, under schema, click on the add field option. In the name field, type the variable names we are sending in JSON format to the test underscore topic underscore console topic, one after another and also choose their appropriate types. If you are using the same Python script from the resources section of video 2.5, then create a table exactly as shown here. Firstly, we have the data variable of type string, followed by timestamp variable of type timestamp. Next, we have temperature and humidity of float type respectively. Please do note that the names we use here should exactly match the variable names that we use in the JSON format. Else, BigQuery can't recognize the data being sent to the topic later. If you have to deal with very large amounts of data, partitioning and clustering order are for you. But I am not going to deal with the data in that large scale. So I stick with default for the rest of the things. At last, thoroughly recheck everything and click on create table. With this, we are done with the first step of our agenda. Next, let us see the data flow pipeline creation. Firstly, head over to the Google Cloud Console and search for data flow from the navigation menu under the big data section. On the page that opens up before you, click on create job from template option. Fill the job name field with the name of your choice. But make sure the name you use will have only small letters and is unique in that project. Next, from the cloud data flow template, choose a template named cloud pub subtopic to BigQuery. This default template of Google Cloud takes care of routing the data from the pub sub topic to BigQuery without sweating in terms of coding. In the regional endpoint, choose a region of your choice. Next, in the cloud pub sub input topic, give the name as test underscore topic underscore console. If you are following my naming conventions or give your topic's name, in the BigQuery output table field, 
give the location of your table which we created in the first step of this video. Make sure the format is as follows project colon dataset dot table name and finally for a temporary location head over to the cloud storage service page. Here from the list of the buckets available choose any one bucket preferably the bucket we created in video 5.2. Now click on the overview tab and find link for gsutil. Copy this link and head back to the dataflow pipeline creation page. Paste the copied link address into the temporary location field. Now add forward slash tmp to the link we have pasted at the end. Based on your interest you can tweak some settings in optional parameters as well. After everything is done, click on run job. Give some finite time, say 5 minutes, for the job to run full fledged. This completes the setup phase of data visualization. Now, before publishing the data to the test underscore topic underscore console topic, we need to modify the line responsible for the delay from the time dot sleep of 3 to time dot sleep of 60. It's because we are sending this data to the cloud to visualize. Sending too much redundant data will be heavy in terms of cost and query. So instead of publishing the data for every 3 seconds, now we publish it for every minute. You can relax this publishing even further by tuning your publishing interval based on your preferences. I am attaching the modified script publisher underscore 60 dot pi in the resources section. Now start publishing the telemetry to test underscore topic underscore console topic. For the sake of demo, I am taking the readings for half an hour and the same will be reflected in publisher underscore 60 dot pi. After you published your readings, download the file sql.txt from the resources section and copy its contents. Now open your BigQuery from the console and paste the copied contents into the query editor field. Replace the project underscore id, dataset underscore id, table underscore id fields with your own. This statement will populate the mentioned table underscore id with the published readings. Limit 100 can be used to query the first 100 readings if you are dealing with very large data. In our case, we are going to have only 30 readings and therefore this statement doesn't make much sense. To order the data, we are using order by timestamp ASC. Here ASC stands for ascending order. Now click on run and query the data. You should see your table populated with data. Ok, after this point, to visualize the data, we just need to click on explore with data studio and a data explorer page will open up before you. From here, you can visualize your data. But wait, you deserve better. For making this far in the course, I would like to add a cherry on the top. We will now explore the data reports creation in the data studio. The feature that makes these reports exceptional is their ability to be shared with live data. It means the reports you share with others are not going to be static. They are updated automatically with alterations in the data later. Of course, you can always have static backups if you wish those reports not to change with the data. With this motivation, head over to https colon slash slash datastudio.google.com. If you are greeted with a welcome screen, finish it and finally make sure you land upon a page that looks very similar to this. Now click on create and then the data source. Here you can see all the connectors available for data studio. Look out for a big query connector. Fortunately, I found it here itself. Click on select. 
This should open a list of projects associated with your account. Make sure the account you use, the Google Cloud Console and Data Studio are one and the same. From here, select the table you want to visualize and click on Connect. On the page before you, I recommend you disable record count and change the timestamp type to date or minute from date hour. Now click on the create report. A new page should open. Here click on the add to report. If you like dark themes like me, choose simple dark from the theme. Now click on add a chart button and select the time series chart. Now Click anywhere on the artboard and that should place a time series chart on the artboard with the timestamp on the X axis and temperature on the Y axis. Hola! There you go. You are done with data visualization corresponding to temperature. You can follow the same procedure for humidity as well. But the only thing you need to change is the metric of the chart. For humidity, you just need to change the metric of the time series chart to humidity. So here I am copying the temperature time series plot properties to the humidity plot. Now to make it clean and neat, you can style both the charts of your preference and enable the show points and show data labels to make data points visible on the plot. If you want to customize the plot for specific data points, Click on the filter control button and place a filter. Change the dimension from data to timestamp. Click on the view and filter the data points based on your preference. This plethora of options available here provides you with endless customizations. Finally, to share the live report, click on share and add people from here. Alternatively, you can download a PDF copy and share that. With this, I am going to conclude this video. Video Summary In this video, we have learnt the following. Data flow pipeline creation using cloud data flow. Directing the data flow to bucket in the cloud storage. Querying the telemetry in BigQuery. Data visualization in Google Data Studio. In this section, we have covered the following. Cloud data flow in brief, exploring the cloud storage, a tour of cloud BigQuery, data studio and data visualization.